right now on Five on Your Side at 10. Held hostage for 50 days tonight, the youngest American citizen taken by Hamas is finally coming home. Every life is precious. Children are children, and, and, and they should be not touched. Tonight, local reaction from both sides of the conflict. A windy day throughout the area with gusts over 30 miles an hour as that storm moved through. How the wind's going to play a factor over the next couple of days when we'll switch it and warm us up down the road. Our top story, a deadly shooting at a North County hotel. Tonight, two young men are charged with murder. Those two young men are 18 and 20 years old. A third juvenile suspect is also in custody tonight. Good evening, I'm Mark Maxwell. Mike Bush has the night off. Two men were shot last night at the In Town Suites Hotel on Dunn Road in Hazelwood. One of them died at the hospital. Five on your side's Laura Barcheski has the latest details on the investigation. Hazelwood police say they were called to the In Town Suites Extended Stay Hotel off Dunn Road Saturday night just after 1045 on reports of shots fired. Officers say they found a 52 year old man on the floor inside the hotel with a gunshot wound to the leg and tried to help the victim as much as possible before he was rushed to the hospital where he died. The investigation led detectives to another location roughly a mile and a half away. Hazelwood police say they then found another man with a gunshot wound to the chest inside a car here in the 8200 block of North Lindbergh. That man was also rushed to the hospital, but they haven't released any information about his condition. Police are originally said an argument between both of the victims happened at the hotel before shots rang out. But then Sunday afternoon, police announced they arrested and charged 20 year old Jalen McElroy and 18 year old Marshawn Brinkley with second degree murder, assault and armed criminal action. A juvenile was also taken into custody. I reached out to the hotel, but no one was available for comment. This is the third shooting incident in this area over the last roughly two months. A man was shot and killed at the quick trip on Lindbergh in early October and just Last weekend, a man was shot after an argument at the Phillips 66 across the street from QT. Reporting in Hazelwood, Laura Barcheski, five on your side. And if you know anything about that shooting, you can call Hazelwood police at 314-838-5000. Tonight, St. Louis police are looking for the man who shot a 65 year old man in the head in North City. That shooting happening yesterday afternoon near Claxton and Lillian Avenues of Union. We're told the man has severe injuries. Investigators have not yet said what led up to that shooting. And tonight, Wentzville police are investigating a shooting that sent one person to the hospital. That happened just before 1.30 this morning on West Allen Street. Police say multiple people were arguing when someone fired a gun. A man was shot in the chest and taken to the hospital. We're told he is expected to survive. Police tell us they arrested several suspects and seized a gun. And a live look at St. Louis Lambert International Airport tonight. A record number of people were expected to pass through airports across the country as they head home from the Thanksgiving holiday. Only a handful of delays reported at Lambert with some snow just to our north and west. No snow reaching St. Louis, just a cold rain that has since moved out. Weather first meteorologist Gary Frank is tracking a frigid start to the week, Gary. Yeah, and it's that wind that we felt throughout the day, and obviously it made it feel cooler throughout the day, but as the sun came out, it was at least a little bit better. Now that wind behind that is really settled in. It's with us right now as well. You can see the trees moving around, the flags here in Edwardsville just a little bit as that at least rain and snow mix that we had more snow to the north than anything that moved out. We've seen a few clouds kind of hang around. They're going to keep us from tanking too much, but look at all that frigid air to the north. And not only is colder air settling in, but we're looking at temps that have held steady in the mid thirties. We're at 37 right now. We get a west breeze at 12 miles an hour. It feels like 29. That's going to be a key for us even into the overnight hours as we have our wind speeds that are up tonight. We have slow clearing, but temps in the upper 20s. It's a colder start to the week. We are warming back up briefly, but we have more actual rain chances. It's hard to believe two Sundays in a row I've been able to talk about something falling from the sky and it's all liquid this time. We'll continue to talk about that and also target that warmer day and how much rain we can expect down the road. Tonight, all lanes of I-44 in Shrewsbury are back open. Two eastbound lanes were closed for most of the day as crews cleaned up an overturned semi. The crash happened around 7.30 this morning. Police say the trailer detached from the cab and rolled down the hill. We're told no one was seriously hurt. That crash remains under investigation. Tonight, the St. Louis bomb and arson unit is investigating a deadly fire in South City. The fire broke out around 8.30 yesterday morning on Water Street in the Patch neighborhood. Firefighters found a man dead inside. 
Investigators have not yet released his identity or a cause of the fire. An early morning fire caused a scare at a senior living facility in Webster Groves. The two alarm fire broke out around 5 this morning at the Laclede Groves Lutheran Senior Services Facility on Laclede Station Road. Nine other departments pitched in to help put that fire out and rescue 18 people from the building. Some neighbors, like Bill Wickman, were woken up by the blaring horns and lights. We just woke up and looked out the window and saw the lights up here, and there was so many fire companies, we just wondered what was going on. Webster's good at getting over here all the time. Unfortunately, the ambulances are here a lot just because of the community, but they're really quick to respond. Wickman believes the concrete walls of that building helped shield it from more damage. Officials say the fire was contained to only one apartment and only one person was taken to the hospital. They are expected to be okay. Tonight, 17 more hostages have been freed by Hamas. Among them, a four-year-old girl. She's the first American citizen hostage released. This latest release coming on the third day of a four-day ceasefire between Israel and Hamas which is also allowing humanitarian aid to enter Gaza. A total of 58 hostages have been released so far, but 180 remain in Gaza, including nine Americans. There's hope that truce could stretch on longer to allow for more of the hostages to be released. And tonight, there's hope for peace here in St. Louis. Five on your sides, Annie Kroll has reaction from both Jewish and Islamic leaders. Annie? Well, exactly, Mark. It's a huge step forward releasing the first American from Hamas today, though President Biden announcing his administration still wants more during this four-day pause. Four-year-old American Israeli citizen Abigail Idan has been freed, but tragically lost both of her parents, killed while trying to save her in the October 7th attacks just outside Gaza. It is horrific. Every single life lost is horrific. 17 hostages were released by Hamas on Sunday, including Abigail Idan, who is now in the hands of the Red Cross. She's been through a terrible trauma. You know, her mom was killed in front of her when her, when her kibbutz was uh, attacked. Abigail's father was also shot and killed by Hamas militants as he was attempting to shield her from the gunfire. Karen Scher, a mother and leader of the Jewish Federation of St. Louis, says Abigail's story is tragic. But I can't even imagine um, you know, what she's coming home to and what she's going to be dealing with and what she saw, what she remembers or what she doesn't remember. She's so young. Taken by Hamas nearly seven weeks ago, Abigail is just one of thousands of children caught in the international crosshairs. The, the plight of, of Abigail, which we, I personally and we all sympathize with, shed the light on the plight of 200 Palestinian children who nobody's talking about. and and. You know, children are children, and, and, and they should be not touched. Families should not be touched. A statement from the Red Cross saying, quote, the plight of people being held hostage and their loved ones is a top priority. The ICRC continues to pursue every possible avenue to secure the release of all remaining hostages, calling for urgent, immediate access to all those detained. Palestinians celebrating their own hostages being released. Photos from the reunion show six women and 33 children freed from two prisons as part of an exchange deal with Israeli authorities. And all children are the same, should be protected, both Palestinians and Israelis, not one side over the other. Each day we pray that we get more of these hostages released. We are holding so much. Hamas has now released dozens of the more than 200 hostages being held. For now, no permanent truce has been reached. So come Tuesday in Israel, the ceasefire will end. You can follow the latest news on the hostage release by texting Israel to 314-425-5355. We'll send a link of the latest news directly to your phone. Healing families. Don't let anybody tell you you aren't important in the life of your child. A sister's mission to break the cycle of absentee parents. Tis the season to shop and park. Parking is not a competitive sport. Tonight, tips on finding the best spot and the holiday parking etiquette to keep you on the nice list. Wind chills tomorrow morning are going to be cooler. We're in the mid-20s is what it's going to feel like when an even colder morning is on the way and when we'll finally flip the script and warm back up. Tonight, Sports Plus has turned into Mizzou Made. 30 minutes of wall-to-wall -wall Mizzou coverage, including a list of the 10 greatest Tiger players of all time. And what is it like being the parents of the quarterback, Brady Cook? 
We introduce you to Jim and Amy Cook. A lot of good times this year, but it hasn't always been a day at the park. I'm most proud of him for the person he is. I mean, he's just amazing. And so we let him know, you know, you're never letting us down. You know, you're not letting us down. If you lose the game, you know, we're proud of you. And we go one-on-one -on -one with head coach Eli Drinkwitz. And you won't believe who texted him this morning. See you in 20 minutes for Sports Plus.